Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we're back to another recording of MTG Arena. Today is Monday, November the 4th, and we're getting overpowered by the music, which... Maybe it needs to go down a little bit. Can we adjust this? Like, that is a little too loud, and it pops in and pops out, so let's... Let's... Let's see if we can adjust this down to about that. Yeah, that I think is better where I want it to be. So, let's see, we've got a 750 gold daily quest and 500 mastery XP. I played some off screen, so we've got some packs and some masteries things to do. Otherwise, what we're going to do today is because you have every month this requirement to jump into a limited rank draft and the draft does seem like it gives you cards it only makes sense that at the beginning of the month and I should have done this last week I should play a rank draft get more cards and then think about doing deck rebuilds until you get to a point where you have probably all the cards you you would want or you're just getting mostly garbage cards that aren't any better than what you already have uh, which might be a little bit of a hard thing to do in Magic because they do cycle out the expansions fairly fast enough that by the time you would have everything, particularly if you're playing free-to-play in Arena, uh, maybe Arena is, is nicer than Paper Magic, the real-world Magic, but uh, they'll just bring out a new expansion and then we'll start trying to get expansion cards. But I do want to get this monthly reward. I'm at tier 1 silver uh, because I was playing off screen. I otherwise also uh, finished DuckTales Remastered. It is a shame that game is not for sale because they do a pretty great job of remastering an old NES game and making it almost a modern game. I consider it way better than Shovel Knight which I just rage quit on after three episodes uh, just because it has that easiness now in fairness I played DuckTales Remastered on easy which I think since it is oddly for the most part at least half a kids game targeted towards kids otherwise it's targeted towards old people that watch the original DuckTales cartoon uh, so playing on easy seems perfectly fine once I did try it on hard mode and it did not unlock very hard mode when I beat the game on easy and hard mode adds lives into the mix so you only have like three lives and you have to earn extra lives to beat the whole game at that point yeah that would be hard I'm not sure I would be able to beat it because there was at least 30 times in which I fell down a uh, fell down a hole and died theoretically and so I, I don't think I could really do that I didn't get enough money after beating the entire game to to actually um, this is a good land um, to I didn't get enough money to unlock all the extras uh, but they did let you after you beat it on easy go back and play any of the levels again and get more gold so in theory if you were going to just stick with easy, you could play it two or three times over a long period of time. And that would... Uh, that would be your solution. Um, there is also this fest festival standard artisan, which we can sign up for now. I don't think we can start. So, we probably will do this also, um, but there is this danger, I think, that doing these to get these scant cosmetics, which I think also gives us the cards, at least one copy of the cards, is nice, but it might not really be worth the 2500 I, I've yet to really figure out how this is the right, right way to do this. Um, so like last time we did this, this would be 5,000 and 
Let's see. You'll use them plus the lands to build a 40 card deck. See, the thing about draft that they really don't explain here is that I think you're keeping at least the cards you pick from those drafts. So you're actually doing pretty good uh, to do a draft. The question is, do I want this or do I want War of the Spark? Which we would have to, I guess, mostly go back and figure out, do we care about War of the Spark? Where is that in the, um, in the, it would be easiest to go to the store and figure this out. It's weird that that's the way this works. By the way, the My Little Pony things that you can buy for Extra Life are gone. They were only for a week uh, on top of the Extra Life special event that was fine. Alright, so here we are. Um... Here's Throwing the Veil Drain. This is Core Set 2020. And these two feel like they are the ones that you would want to get. Is it the Core Set 2020? And you might even want to wait and see if Core Set 2021 uh, happens. Because as I understand it, and I could be totally wrong about this, the Core Sets are just the same cards being reprinted over and over again from previous expansions that that need to exist otherwise the game just falls apart and has no legacy uh, so war of the spark is one step further behind as i think it's gonna go and it already has happened here is course at 2019 cards have been banned and rotated out which that's that seems insane that that's what they did and if I had been playing in beta and I bought a bunch of Core Set 2019 cards and then it said all of those are banned you have to now buy the exact same cards in uh, Core Set 2020 I would be very upset um, and the number and the little symbol the M19 versus the M20 should not concern anyone but I think it does, and I think that's kind of the problem, uh, is that Wizards of the Coast of Magic the Gathering has tricked a lot of people into seeing value in cheap printed paper that, let's face it, sometimes looks very pretty and might even be good card stock, but it is hardly no magic card, really, when you add up its materials, is worth anywhere close to some of the prices that get charged when you have cards out there that are worth a hundred dollars plus uh for a piece of cardboard that's ridiculous um what is this power up collection that that would be spending more money and if i click it it'll just pop up the thing all right so rank draft eldrin is the right move uh, i think I, I don't think we go back to War of Sparks. I think we do Rank Drive, Throne of Eldraine, and we do uh, Core Set 2020 if that was available. And so there goes 5,000. I've done this once before. Deck Helper enabled, powered by. What is this? Hmm. channelfireball.com is this something you're not seeing this okay so this is the untapped.gg is helping me so what we want to do and what we have to do here is we have to pick not a strategy that is uh, specific to any color we need to pick the best cards just like in a hearthstone draw I cannot read half of this so 5.0 it says is best of the best 0, 0.0 is completely unplayable so I'm looking and you're not seeing any of these numbers 
but there's little numbers on top of each of these. I don't think this feature even existed. Um, so I can just straight up cheat this. Um, but there, sometimes it gives me like two numbers. So it seems like maybe there's there's some more to this. Alright, so it seems to me like this says 2.0, 3.5. This spell costs three less to cast if the planet has seven more cards in there, draw four cards. So and it seems like this is the second best card at 2.5 and this is also 2.5 uh, and is that a 3.0 hmm. three or more three or more things okay three or more forest for the gingerbread cavern so I need to pick between draw cards uh, not being able to block giving another night card menace okay I'm gonna take this and this is gonna take forever if we have to play this way um, geez I, I really need to fix this is a 3.0 this is a 3.0. Um, this is a 3.0. Or this looks like a 3.8. That creature doesn't untap during its controls next turn. It's not a bad one. I think we can move pretty easily. Hmm. Bring back spell cards. Let's see. Okay. I take Queen of Ice. I guess we're playing blue. Now these two blue cards aren't that good. So an a uncolored thing might be useful here but it's not a particularly high value card. In fact, none of these cards are particularly high value. So I, I would have to uh, play something here that's a discard draw or, and then that's gonna have to be a red or, hmm, do something different. Hmm. Yeah, I think your only chance is this. Which means we need a red now. See, it says that's a 2.0 value. And I'm really putting my faith in, in other people here. By playing this way. But I might as well. I, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Let's just face it. I do not know what I'm doing here. And this is... The kind of help that a lot of people will accept and use without learning. Uh, so do I want another blue that's 2.3 or do I want this? I, I like really like Herodric Banner but apparently they say it's not that good. That They're instead saying that this is better but it, that wouldn't work. I think we take Herodric Banner just in case I need to make a red mana. Right now this is a 3.5. Should be a red green. Hmm. So it'd be interesting buff. Scry and draw a card. That's 3.0. I think they may be overvaluing drawing cards. So now I would need a red and a green. Hmm. So let's see. 
draw a card. I'm drawing all these cards, what am I drawing towards? That's the question. Hmm. I guess maybe the reason why the card here that costs three less if your opponent has seven seven more cards. Did I even pick that card? I guess I never did pick that card. I guess it has two values because it, it has two values. One that's particularly good. Uh, So, like, if, if it's at its lower price, the card is one value, and if it's at its higher price, it's at another value. Hmm. They kind of keep the good cards at the top here. Sort of. Hmm. But then this one is, is labeled as a 0, 0.0. Hmm. I really think I only have enough time to play this once a month. Right, that's a 2.0. This is a 2.6 and this might be the best one to pick, but going green again is not really what I want to do. Not really getting great cards. Hmm. It's gotta f adjust this to give me some land. There's no way I would be able to to do this otherwise. Hmm. Do I want just more turtles? Turtles all the way down? Is that what we're playing? Because it says this is a 3.0. It says this is a 2.5. We've got one creature here. Um, I guess we'll take that. And then... Let's see. Extra attack and first strike every time we draw a card, which is half of what we're doing. Or more food tokens. Yeah, this is just getting worse and worse. Let's see. Sacrifice a food to power something up. That's a 1.5. This is a 1.5. This is a 1.2. Hmm. <laughs> Honestly, I think it would be easier just to take the gingerbread, ginger brute. That way we have some one mana creature. Hmm. Hmm. And so now we're on the pack two, which how that was pack two, I don't know. Like... I don't know how you do this in the real world. Do you get everybody around and you each person in the tournament, which would be like seven people in the draft, open one pack and that's pack one? Or what? This looks like this is a 5.0. 5, 5 like, it's a planeswalker. It's almost certainly the thing to get. Um... It doesn't seem like any of the other cards come anywhere close, although this isn't a terrible one. So this would be green and black, um, which would be uh, hard to play, but Let's I'll take play it. play a game of hide and seek. Hmm. Next, let's see. We could get more turtles, so we could get more of this. Or. This would give you a white. 
which you don't need. Hmm. This would give you food tokens, but it says it's really low value actually. This would be a spell token. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're down to this one or this one as far as your best bet. I wish this was better, but it says it's terrible. I don't know why it says it's terrible. Probably because it's so expensive at six mana. Um, the the real competitors are this one, which. And then this one, and then this one, and this one. So I'll take this one. Alright, let's see. Put a 1 1 counter on target knight. I don't think we would do that. Plus 2, plus 2 every time that one attacks. It's not bad. Hmm. This one's probably a pretty good one, but I don't know if I want it. It says this one's good if we want to go into the red section. That's just straight damage. Um, any number of cards on from your graveyard on top of your library and draw a card that that seemed overpowered I saw someone play this card and I was like thinking to myself boy does that seem overpowered um, what's this do nothing interesting so it would be this or this or this or this and if we're going with just numbers it would be this or this so I'm gonna go with this let's see other knights get plus one plus one they say that's a pretty good card but that would be if you had other knights uh, I have to think about what cards I have in actuality and the sideboard thing I don't I don't get that at all like let's just click on that and see what that does because it, it doesn't seem like it does anything in draft and yet it's just there as long as you control an artifact this guy has flying that's probably not gonna happen flash enchant creature gets minus two minus two seven or more cards in their graveyard gets a negative six Alright. If at least three green mana will cast a spell, put a 1 1 counter on it. Hmm. Okay. We could get another one of these. We could get this. Which is probably what we should do. Or we could go with this. Let's go with that. Maybe I'm overly focused on land. Interesting, this doesn't have a score, or wasn't showing a score. It's taking a sweet time. Hmm. I assume this one is red and green. Hmm. They say that's pretty good, because it can't be stopped. This would give just a white, which... We have this one white card. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I think the option is pretty obvious here. The only good card in this group is that one. And it says this is good. It says this is a 4.0, where this is a 3.0. And we already have a bunch of these. 
I wish there was some kind of synergy to this, but it really isn't going to be that. It's just going to be who plays the best value cards in a draft and does the best. It's kind of the opposite of constructed. A plus one, plus one with flying makes this a 3.0 in that format, which is still better than anything else that's on offer here. This is the best card value wise. Let's see. This is too expensive, I guess is what they're saying. This actually synergizes better than the, anything else. So this is a 2.5. It, it's a 1.5 slash 2.5 according to their number where this is just a 2.5. Um, but I think it actually synergizes pretty well with my deck because I'm going to draw a lot of cards. And again, the best card to play would be that one. And here we have a 3.0 planes compared to that, which is a 2.5. When it says sacrifice an artifact or another creature, that means one of yours. You can't sacrifice somebody else's. So, we'll take that. And then this is a 2.5. Hmm. To create a food token. Where I think it'd probably be better just to take this 1.5, because the rest of these are 1.5s also. And then a food token. These all feel like they say 1.3s. And then this is a 1.8 and this is a 3.0. And then I have no choice here so I'll take that. So now we're to pack 3. This is a 4.3. Hmm, which probably have to take it. This is a 3.5, uh, which would just be multicolored white or black cards. This is a 3.5, but we already have one of those, so I don't think we can have two of those anyways. So I don't know why it's really even offering that. That seems seems like a mistake I don't want to get mines and dwarves that's that was my mistake the first time I played constructed as I tried to grab a bunch of these dwarven mines and they never worked at all so it would be down to this this or this and this seems like this does everything and it would be white and red so we'll take it Right. And then we have a 2.5 here, 2.5 here, I think that's a 3.5, this is a 4.0, let's see, do we have anything that beats a 4.0? No, I don't, so, look at the top four cards in your library, you may reveal an, an artifact or enchantment among them and put it into your hand. This goes to the bottom of the library in random order. Hmm. Alright. Next we have this 4.0, which we can have multiples of that. Or this 3.0, which I don't think we need. Hmm. Nothing really talking about the mana curve here. So. We could go be going with some very expensive cards. 
I don't know if in draft you play for a late game or if you play for a mid game or if you play for an aggro game. Um, that's that's a question I guess that's worth asking. Right. That's not good. This is a 3.0. And would be drawing another card. This puts a 1 1 token. Discard and draw a card. And then discard and draw a card again. So, flying, draw a card. I, I think drawing is better than discarding unless you're playing some strategy. So then the question would be, do I need a spell that would allow me to destroy a minion, or do I need just another flying minion? Hmm. I think we're kind of fine on flying minions, so I'm going to take the, the spell there. Two on night tokens, that's a, I think that's a 3.9. So I think that beats everything else. Battlefield with a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Or another turtle. Hmm. Turtles aren't as good as this, it says. So I should just take this. Like that That's all we're really doing here, is we're taking the best cards and seeing how well we can get there. Does this mean we're going to uh, guarantee victory just by playing the best cards probably not like I don't think we're gonna get seven victories from this but it almost certainly will get us further than we were last time hmm. and let's see we have we might want to take this and bring back some people. Maybe. Yeah, because this would be a swamp land that would almost certainly always be tapped, where this spell does something different so this I think is better than that um, let's see Dwarven Mine or this there we go scry to you can sacrifice it to draw all two cards. None of these cards are particularly good. Hmm. Untap a creature or or artifact you control. Or scry to, or sacrifice a food. Um, I guess what we'll do is take this, and then we've got some other bad options. Let's see, scry or another brute. I think Brute, Ginger Brute is better. And then, I think this one, like, I'm really setting myself up to mill myself, so it's what I'm doing here. Like, totally setting myself up for failure. Hmm. Tap another creature to get trample and plus one plus one. 
It's not a terrible card. And it's better than I think the mine is. Then we have no choice here. So. Here we can now see our details. Which this is a nice setup here. Uh, this is actually helpful. Uh, we can see we have a pretty good balance of creatures except for in threes in which we have a lot more creatures and fours where we have a lot more creatures and fives we have all creatures and six are all non-creatures we have five whites 17 blues two red blacks um, seven reds seven greens four colorless uh, three seven multicolor I think is that what that is um, and 17 lands and you can break this down even more into the classes of creatures that we have. I assume if I didn't have a, any rogues it would just not list that. Hmm. So there's probably a lot you can mull over on this and figure that out. Um, then if I want to be fancy I can come over here and select a different card back. Um, and so we have forests. Can I change anything here? Because I have like 52 cards and why, why do I have 52 cards? Is there something I could get rid of? Let's see, if I want to click forest, I can add forests. Interesting. Which you need three or more forests to get the food tokens. You would need three or more swamps to get the witch's cottage to work. Um, you need three or more islands to get that to work. Can I get rid of something? Um, is the question, or am I doing something? something because I swear I added things and it didn't change anything as far as the count hmm. like do I want to get rid of something that would just be terrible like this is terrible can I get rid of that sweet um, This would require white. Do I have anything else that requires white? I don't think so, so let's get rid of that. Yeah. And get rid of that. And then we can get rid of that. And that. And that. Alright. That makes things a lot easier now. Now I'm at 48 of 40 cards. Is it really going to let me do this? Um, hmm. Because I was mostly thinking of blue-red half the time, and mostly thinking of blue-green half the time. Hmm. Let's see, we've got like five here. Let's give one here. And we've got like four here. And we've got... Uh, three here, so like, let's upgrade anything that happens like that now we're up to 52 of 40 cards aren't we supposed to be at 60 so am I going to over mana myself yeah, one two three and I don't think you can just add cards like 
Like, what would justify me adding these cards? Can I do that? No. So you can't add things that you didn't get in the draft. <laughs> that makes sense. That'd be really crazy if you could just pull out your binder of cards in the real world and go, okay, now I'm going to add all the cards and make a constructed deck. But you can adjust the mana drop, which I am happy to adjust the mana drop here. Um, I think six black is, is probably the wrong way to go here. But let's go one extra blue. And how many greens do we really have? Yeah, let's go two extra blue. So there I have 60 cards. Very heavy on the mana. It seems like we can adjust our deck. So if we want to bring back those cards, that's something we can do. So, how long is the question? Did it did that take me? Almost an entire hour. 40, 43 minutes, basically. Just to go through a draft and build the deck. And in this case, it wasn't even so much me reading the cards. Uh, which, there's still a lot of that going on here. Like, there's still tons of instances in which I just don't know what's going on. Uh, and don't know what cards do what but yeah this is probably the best starting hand I've ever had as far as mana cost but I still probably need to mulligan it because it's not a good hand um, as far as having something to play um, what do we want to get rid of yeah, just go ahead and put that down in the field. All right. I would guess compared to constructed, you probably do need more mana and more lands. But I what I what I really would have needed is a card that was super insane um, that allowed you to what would be a good thing to do like deal damage based on the number of lands in your uh, on your field I guess because I'm gonna draw a bunch which I guess having a ton of land now does synergize with drawing because I, I very possibly, in second turn, third turn, fourth turn, may just draw more land. Um, and this card can only go so far with that. Hmm. Hmm. So, play that. Let's see. And do nothing else. And in the turn, and then just start auto passing. Because it's gonna ask me every time if I want to use this ability. What is this? Draw a card. So he's making a bunch of food tokens. Feels like throwing a veil drain is specifically built around a lot of food tokens. Um, or it could just be I'm draw I'm playing against people that have similar cards to what I drew, and what I drew was a bunch of cards that create food tokens and draw cards. The, you're in a weird position here if you're going to try to be free to play you pretty much means you can only do this once a month and so you're not going to get 
anywhere close to the level of experience that if you were doing something like a streamer would do where they would probably be playing one of these once a day alright this guy's got death touch which that sucks Do I want to do something? Yes, I'd like to cast that spell, but I can't do anything. Because this isn't an instant. Alright. No. Pass. Choose blocker. block hmm. this guy has an ability too so there we go now we've got a, somebody that can do something hmm. and we've got a land Five damage to target creature with flying. Well, he's gonna have a creature with flying. Then. Hmm. Get rid of your death touch. Hmm. And next. Oh, wait. Um. I could have tapped this and gotten haste and attacked. Oh well. That, that's probably a, would have been a bad move anyways. Because we want this guy to stand and defend. I would need more reds and more greens. And or more greens. One more red, I guess, would work, or one more, more green would work. And then I could play this. Hmm. And then... If we can get this on the field, and get it attacking, we could buff up this character. I'm... Guy's trying to talk to me, I guess, and and I'm not paying enough attention because stupid abilities. There's still definitely a problem here with just being able to turn and right this. this and then everything has haste and then that can't play um actually attack 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 and then Above that and also make it so this guy can't be blocked and then move forward so the only one that could block would be this hmm. course now he can just attack and we can start doing a face race with his food token um, this was that card that was too expensive at six mana
scry to. definitely don't need that and would we be benefited with that no so we can just top we can just send both of those to the bottom and then none of these have flying and sacrifice this and draw a card I guess Whenever you draw a second card, each character... Hmm. Alright, so I think the way this plays is this is going to put this here. And next time I draw a second card, uh, then I'll... So I... Yeah, I'll be able to attach it to something like that. So we'll attack here and we'll attack here. We can't really attack with this one uh, because we don't have that extra ability. So just next here. We don't want to give him haste because we don't need haste. That guy will die. Although why he's defending with three guys like how is that even gonna work he's gonna die on the second turn yeah he only killed two of them hmm. Hmm. which fine you've got your food tokens but that doesn't really help you it's not going to have seven or more cards in their graveyard anytime soon. He's got only two. Hmm. Do I have seven or more cards in my graveyard? No, I only have two. Still looking for a red or a green, ideally. And he, he's probably not even going to ever play a... Um, Probably not ever, ever going to play a flying creature, so we have this defense that's kind of pointless. Right, no. Just go ahead and block there. Yeah, even though I turned this guy from a 1-3 to a 3-3, three, three, getting rid of his death touch was way more valuable of this wall like he hasn't been able to do any damage with this card right, so. let's try this draw more cards attached to that and we do have one guy we can bring back if we had three swamps, but we don't, so we could do that, but no, that wouldn't work. But it's probably better to play this so I could play this finally, instead of playing this, which wouldn't really do anything. Alright. Next. choose that to attack with I could probably attack here and see if they would decide to defend but I'm not gonna bother hmm. yeah I could defend against something like this and give him another food token which he's not doing uh, or defend against this and kill that. Sacrifice two foods, create a 7-7 seven, seven giant creature token, otherwise create three food tokens. 
So is he gonna now create that 7-7? Seven, seven? <laughs> yes, he is. Interesting. How are we gonna defeat that? on the field something that useful. Search your library for basic land card, put it in the battlefield, then shuffle your deck. Interesting. Beanstalk Giant. Seven mana card. And then he can also Equals the number of lands you controlled. So, geez, if I had Beanstalk Giant, then my deck would probably be pretty good. Alright. No. Pass. Defend. Block. Just block that one, I guess. We're dangerously approaching the end of the game here, where I'm gonna lose. But I'm not sure what I needed to change. Uh, honestly. Alright. I'm gonna play this. And then I'm gonna play this. Hmm. And then I'm gonna play this so I can put this on the field next turn. And I can do this. Could also tap this and give it haste, but I don't think that would be a smart move. You know, like... Because this would have to also lose its defender. So just attack with that and that. I don't have any swamps on the field. So th the chances of me getting three swamps on the field are pretty low. Unless there was some weird spell. But I can't put this on the field. Jeez, I just, just auto pass. Auto pass everything. We're pretty, we do have a decent amount of news today, but like when I'm actually focusing and trying to win, it's really difficult to, to take some time out and get distracted like that. Hmm. Plus three, plus three. He's making everything a giant, which is not what I would, would like. Hmm. It's not like he's going to run out of cards. So the, the main lesson I can take from this is drawing actually doesn't seem like it does anything terrible to you. Okay, so here comes the big twist. Can we survive this turn? Hmm. Hmm. No. Does, if he's just gonna defend with that, 
If he's just gonna attack with that, then we're fine. Maybe. At least for the next, for this turn. Hmm. What would this even do for us? Green or blue or red? What what would I need? Hmm. Alright, green. We'll we'll take green. Green creatures get plus one plus one. We'll play that. And then Knights of Walls. Hmm. hmm. We'll use this for an unblockable attack. Ah oh, man, if I'd done blue though, I would have done more damage in this instance. So I should have done blue. Because, yeah, that. These two cards, even though they're big, are pretty much just going to be defenders. They don't have trample. And they just do more damage. Um, I guess because I made this a 7, he might be afraid to attack with that. Um, how does he think he's blocking? Oh, because he has reach? Alright, well. If he's doing that, then... We'll do that. That was a weird turn of events, to say the least. I need to be able to draw more cards. Darn it. So is he gonna attack? I don't see a reason why he wouldn't. Honestly, I don't see a reason why he wouldn't just attack with everything anyways. Hmm. Yeah, everything's going to attack. Okay, so we block this one to kill that one, and then we block this one to save ourselves, or we let it hit and then we're down to one health and maybe we lose. Whereas Ginger Brute, I mean, could be sacrificed. He, he could be sacrificed to... To give us some health, and this food token could be sacrificed to give us some more health. I didn't 
probably play that right L. Can't pay it, play three health to do that. Pretty much lost. Hmm. And I think I want to play one more game, like before I end this recording. Like, otherwise, y you're in this weird position. I guess, I guess I'm gonna have to make that decision. Like, if it is gonna take an hour to do a draft deck, regardless. Uh, just not block at all. Um, if it's if it's gonna take 45 minutes to do a draft to start with, our episodes once a month just going to be this is the first of the month episode where we just draft the deck and play it once, and then come back in the next recording because there's different ways that you could go with that certainly. Hmm. So one loss. Uh, I think, yeah, for consistency's sake, um, we need to end this recording here. And then we'll start the next recording, continuing with the ranked draft throne of Eldrin. And that's pretty much, I think, all we'll need to do. We'll get the daily quest done. And probably not get the 10 daily rewards you'd like to get. Uh, you can see as far as the weekly daily rewards I was playing after midnight last night. So I've already made 12 of the like 15 weekly rewards and we're up to rank 45 as far as the mastery level. Anyways, that's going to be it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want to friend or follow me on any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below in the description box. And if you want to support me even further, there's a link to Patreon, or you can friend me on Steam and gift me a game off my wishlist. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.